As you know, starting your day right is absolutely essential. Well, the same thing applies to CCR diving. The preparation is the key to success. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the preparation that you need to do to set your unit up to go diving. So we're going to be talking about our checklist. We're going to be talking about oxygen cell calibration and our pre-dive checklist. So let's dive into it. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is your assembly checklist. So the first thing that you got to do when you want to go and start diving your Liberty unit is that you need to assemble it. The, the, the best way to assemble your unit is to follow a checklist that we have created for you that makes your assembly much easier. During your course, you taught to follow the assembly checklist at all times. You'd be surprised how many times you would forget a crucial step of the checklist. We all make mistakes and this way we ensure that we don't forget anything. Currently we use a checklist that you can print out and just go and tick off with your pen and just follow it down that way or you can just download it into your phone and just um, have it with you at all times and just go through it on your phone. We're also currently working on releasing a new application for your mobile phone to be able to download it into it and then um, just go and simply tick off while you're assembling your unit. The checklists slightly vary based on your unit's configuration. We have them all downloadable on our webpage. So based on your configuration, you can download a checklist that is suitable for your particular configuration. Always follow your checklist when you're assembling your unit. So when following the assembly checklist, we're going to get to the point where we need to calibrate our oxygen sensors. We're going to calibrate them on oxygen and we're going to have a look at it, how you do it on your Liberty unit now. So this is our calibration jig and this is what we're going to use to calibrate our oxygen sensors. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're, we're going to place our calibration jig inside of our Liberty head. You can actually do this process even with your head off but now because we have the unit uh, assembled, we're going to do it when the unit is assembled. So this is our inhalation hole. So that's where I'm going to put the jig in. That has a direct access to the block with oxygen sensors. So the way this is designed is that you cannot place it in, in a wrong way. So if I'm gonna put it in that, this way, you see that the jig isn't gonna sit flush that our locks that we have here will not line up. So I want it to be sitting flush. So I'm gonna put it down this way and now you can see it nicely falls in into its place and stays there. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we're going to do is we're gonna connect the second end of the hose to our oxygen. So the easiest way for me is to disconnect the oxygen hose from my oxygen manual addition valve. So I'm going to screw these two together. And we're done here for now. So the first thing that we're going to start with is we're gonna write down our values of the measurings of our oxygen sensors on air. So with your assembly checklist, you're gonna get another page, which is an oxygen uh, cell sensor, uh, oxy oxygen sensor calibration chart. So I'm going to write the values down. So from our previous episode, we're in a surface mode now. So by pressing our top button, we get, uh, we get into our oxygen sensor screen and I'm going to write the values down. And when that's done, we're going to go into our menu, into pre-dive, go into our calibration O2. And now we're going to open our oxygen cylinder. So you can see our voltage starting to increase. 
and what we wanted to what what we want to achieve is to get to those values which is a value on air multiplied by by our coefficient and within a tolerance of two millivolts obviously depending on if you're getting your values of your oxygen cells at the sea level or if you're up in the altitude the tolerance the, the measuring can vary uh, depending on how high you are. When the calibration is done automatically by Liberty, Liberty measures your altitude that you do your measuring in, so it adjusts for that. What is very important here is to wait until all the numbers are stabilized. After that, we can check if we're within the range. So we compare our calculation with the value that we got here on our handset. So over here, I can see that we are very close to what we're getting here on our handset and we're very easily within our two millivolt tolerance. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna press start and I'm gonna wait until the calibration is completed. Now I'm going to accept the new the values and we are done with our calibration. Just bear in mind, we have calibrated our oxygen sensors at the pressure of one bar. The performance of the cells can actually change um, after or over the pressure of uh, one bar. And if you're unsure about how your cells perform, um, you can use our oxygen cell tester, which we had a more of a detailed look at our episode uh, about all the accessories that you can get with your Liberty and you can test your oxygen sensors all the way up to the pressure of three and a half bar. So if you're not, uh, if you're unsure about the performance of your uh, oxygen cells, uh, please use the oxygen cell tester and you can test them through there as well. As you can see, the calibration was very easy. Then what you do after is you just carry on and follow the steps in your assembly checklist. When your unit is fully assembled, and you've gone all the way down to the bottom of your checklist. Now we're going to go and have a look at the pre-dive sequence in our handset. Okay, so first step, what you do is we go into our main menu and we will go on the very top, there is pre-dive. So we go into our pre-dive and we enter our pre-dive check, okay? We go through that and now we see how the unit is checking the communication. So left handset communicates with left control unit, the same with the right control unit and with the right handset. If we were running the unit only with one of the, of the handsets, you will see that um, one of the either handsets that you would not be running the unit with uh, would be, would be uh, darkened. So this was our step one. Now moving on to the step two. Here we can see the reading of our pressure sensors. Here it's our current pressure that we're in, and here is the ambient temperature. Next step is our oxygen sensors reading. So this is a current voltage on each one of our sensors and the pressure that they're measuring. Next step, we're going to have a look at our, we're looking at our helium sensors. The units run with an air diluent at the moment. So we have our helium sensors disabled, but normally, um, if you are on Trimix, you would be seeing the reading here. The next step is the reading of our batteries. So here we can see our voltage on our batteries, our charge, how much they're charged, how much runtime we've got left on each battery. And the next step, the unit is checking its solenoids. You can hear our left solenoid clicking. Next step, our right solenoid. You can hear our right solenoid clicking, so we're all good. And now we are having a look at our head-up display. So we check if the what's happening on our software is corresponding with what's happening with the actual head-up display. So we're all good. The next step, is our body display. So we can take our handset, put it close to our body display here. 
and we check for changes if the body display is performing the way it's supposed to so we're all good now we're moving on to the step 10 and here it's where the interesting part starts this is where we're gonna get a real use of our pressure sensors being located inside of our head because we can measure the exact pressure that's within our loop up to a tenth of a millibar which you can actually see here so we'll be doing our negative pressure test so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna suck the air out of the loop and when I reach the level of the pressure that's required for us to perform a valid check you will see a stop sign displayed here I'm gonna close my loop and then I'm gonna put the hoses down and the counter will start and after the counter if within 60 seconds our pressure loss within the loop is less than 10 millibar the loop is sealed and it's good to go for us to enter the water and go diving and the same actually pressure we will same pressure test we will perform uh, doing our positive pressure check so I'm going to start I'm going to show you how it's done so I'm gonna evacuate the loop until it says stop and I have closed the loop now as you can see our counter started so now I have put down our loop hoses so the pressure has changed a little bit and now once it's stabilized we wait and see how the pressure drops as I mentioned earlier if within 60 seconds our pressure drop is less than 10 millibar we're good to enter the water okay now you can see we're getting towards the end of our countdown and our pressure has barely dropped it's about two millibar drop of a pressure so the unit seals very well so we tick okay we're good to do uh, we're good to move on to the next step which is a positive pressure test so i'm going to demonstrate it as well i'm going to open the loop okay so now instead of evacuating the loop i'm going to blow into the loop to perform our positive pressure check Okay, and same thing, the countdown, countdown has started and we check what is happening with our pressure within the loop. So we started on 24, more or less 24 millibar. And as you can see, the pressure within the loop is holding quite well. So we're gonna wait for the countdown to finish as you can see the countdowns finished now and our pressure has barely dropped so again I am happy with this result and I'm done with my partial pressure with my uh, pre-dive sequence completed so what we're going to do now is we're going to enter our dive checklist so we're gonna go into our dive mode and you will be able to see our checklist that's actually within the unit so i'm going to go into our dive mode now and we're going to go into our dive mode we want to dive our unit as eccr and as you can see here we've got a full checklist here so you go through every single step you need to do to check your unit that you're good to go into water so you check your valves you check your pressure on your diluent side if your adv is running your inflator if it inflates your wing um, your uh, diluent manual addition valves you do your overpressure test and your diluent the, at the moment we have the unit set as our diluent um, that our diluent is air if you are diving other gas there would be the gas would be displayed there based on what you would preset in the unit our next step is same thing for our oxygen side so it's check of the valve our valves open our pressure of our oxygen and our manual addition valve next step applies same thing to our bailout uh, and then there is an additional uh, step checklist 
um, including argon valve, opened uh, dry suit inflation, our OPV, do we carry our weights with us? Is our head up uh, working? Our body display, is our torch working as well? The next step, we just have a quick summary. So we can see our set points. In this case, we don't have our descent set point set, but we can see what our high set point and low set point is set currently, our stack time. So since we've reset it, our stack time, it's at zero and we have a fresh scrubber and we're good to go. And our status of our batteries, how much time, we have to run on those batteries. Next step, just a quick reminder of check your reactions to partial pressure of oxygen, uh, check your CO2 regularly and go to bailout if you're not sure. Okay, now we have our pre-breathe time, which you can set up based on your preference, but uh, we have it set to uh, five minutes in a, as a default number and uh, as a default time. And then we get into our dive mode screen and we're ready to submerge. Okay, so that's it for our today's episode. I hope it's given you a little bit more of an insight of how to set your unit up or how the process works and how actually really easy it is to uh, pre-dive check your unit and that the checklist can actually help you quite a lot in not forgetting um, all the steps that you need to follow in order to get yourself into the water safely. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any further questions, please um, visit our webpage at divesoft.com where you can find our configurator. You can configure the unit based on your preference. There's a quite a variety of what you can choose from. And if you have any further questions, please email us at info at divesoft.com. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode.